And what you're saying is, all right, now they're trying to set up a poll. That's right. I understand that we've got Hulk Hogan in a poll match and he's going to be taking on, well, not Hooventude, not Rey Mysterio, not Prince Ikea, not Ultimo Dragon. None of the guys who could actually climb the pole, but no, it's Roddy Piper. So Roddy Piper, who has an artificial hip, Hulk Hogan, who's one of the older people on our roster and the other two biggest motherfuckers we have here who can't possibly climb it. The 400 pound giant, the 300 pound Kevin Nash. We're going to have four guys who cl- who can't climb a pole in a, on a pole match. Believe it or not, folks, Vince Russo is not here. But someone said, well, we used to put shit on a pole. Let's put shit on a pole here. Great. What's on the pole. Is it a contract for a world title shot? Is it for the power of WCW, the presidency of WCW? No. Does the winner get to main event Starcade? No, it's a fucking bat. (laughs) The same kind that sting comes down from the ring, from the heavens and the other NWO just pulls out from the back. Or they hide it under the ring. It's not a special bat. It's not (laughs) Art McGuire or Sammy Sosa's bat. And they're setting the woods on fire here. No, no, it's none of that. It's just a regular fucking bat. The same type we've had in wrestling for 30. That's right. Brain the same type 30 years. And during that time, apparently no of those 30 years where there's been baseball bats in wrestling. No one is thought to say, Hey, can Hulk Hogan or Kevin Nash or Roddy Piper or big show even fucking climb a pole. Cause if they would have seen any of their matches in the last 30 years, they would know the answer to that is no, but what do I care? I'm just fucking getting a check and getting out of here. Well, what are you saying over there today? Something about Luchasaurus, something about Luchador wrestling. I, I hated it all until Conrad called me on it and made me sound like a borderline racist and I'm not. I just have a Napoleon complex, which is why I'm trying to convince everybody. I'm taller than these other two motherfuckers, but my legs, if you could see them underneath the desk, they're swinging back and forth. And when they do, they make a noise and the noise is wee, wee, wee. That's right. Look, I should wee, wee, wee. Those are my feet dangling underneath the desk. Wee, wee, wee. That's what you're saying. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's better than what I thought. You know what I think of Kevin? When I see Kevin Nash coming out here, you know what I'm thinking? Well, I bet uh, that motherfucker knows how to climb a pole. Look. Well, he's ready, man. He's he's ready for the bat. Yes, there, buddy. I'm ready for this match. How huge I'm excited would his strike about zone it. be? I'm excited. How big would hey. his strike zone be? At six ten. What do you think? Strike zone would be right above the knees and right below the uh, right below the armpits. So I'm saying on him, that's what six feet. Uh, six foot strike zone. No, nah, it's probably like five and a half. I'm being maybe. a smart ass. The point is, think- <laughs> this guy's easy to strike out. <laughs> right. What do you think of uh, Kevin Nash's gear here? Well, it was kind of. Uh, oh, he's looking up the pole. I I look don't know that. what to think look of at Kevin that. Nash's gear here. Seriously, he's looking really? up there thinking, "All right, first of all, this fucking pole ain't going to support me." Right. Second of all, if I stand on the top and jump for it, that ain't going to work. I'm going to have yeah, look- to climb it. Look how high they had it in the air. It's fucking ridiculous. And he knows it too. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where they, they didn't think it, they did. They said, go ahead and put it out there. They didn't think about it. How are the doors opening here? Are those remote control or they're dudes on either side. Dudes on either side. Dudes on either side. Dun, 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 dun. You so look great here though. Didn't he? It turns out. There is something worse than being a curtain jerker barn door opener. Barn door opener. That's like the, that's like the Alabama equivalent. <laughs> Were you a curtain jerker down there in that continental territory? No, that's a barn door operator. Yep. I just hey, opened that lo- for the big stars. Which reminds me, when is Francine going to be in Huntsville? It doesn't matter. You won't be here. But the answer is August 17th. You know, she told us on uh, social media, her husband wasn't going to be there with her. Yeah. yeah. Rocket city championship wrestling yeah. is the name of the, uh, promoter. Yeah. Barry is the uh, promoter and he's a nice guy and mm-hmm. he's doing something he's calling wrestling con mm. <laughs> uh, wrestling con too. 
And there's lots of ECW on this one. Mm. So like, um, Joel Gertner's coming. I think Sandman's oh. coming and Sandman. I know it's coming. Yeah. Um, Francine, lots of ECW folks, Jerry Lynn. I think, I think Tommy rich, your, your great close personal friend. Love Tommy rich. Yep. August 17th, baby. Yeah, but it's, it's nothing like what you and I got coming up in St. Louis and in Baltimore. I know you mentioned it before, but of our fans in St. Louis, we've got a lot of low key big hogs are making a trek. You know that Travis Langley is coming all the way from Canada. Really? Yes, he is. And he's going to be there. Uh, Paul Bromwell is going to be in Baltimore. We got a bunch of guys who are going to be in, who are coming up to, uh, to St. Louis tickets available at etix.com for St. Louis. It's etix.com. And that's at off Broadway in St. Louis. And, uh, God, that's coming up soon, Conrad. Whew. Yeah, I'm counting the days, man. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be on the, it's the it's 22nd great, of June. Great Father's Day gift too. St. Louis the 22nd, and of course uh, Baltimore the 23rd. How slow is Roddy Piper coming to the ring here? I get taking your time, but Lord. Yeah, I know. He's selling it. And I got to tell you, this is a cool look for Piper. I don't remember him coming to the ring without the shirt, but the kilt. It feels like we usually saw him wear the shirt and then and then tear it off, but he looks right. like an action figure right here. Yeah, you know, P- Piper. Oh, that guy's like, oh, you forgot your fucking shirt. Put this on. Piper had, uh, Piper was, he was great. I mean, he did a lot. I mean, listen, he did one of the best. He was one of the best promos ever, ever in the business. But he also, you know, he knew when to make it serious. He knew when to make it fun and, uh, you know, what's fun to think about is when, when we're talking about age earlier with, uh, with Jericho, Jericho's 48 be 49 this year. When this match happened, Piper was 43. Yikes. I don't remember how they got that bat down, but my God, how did they, they, you're going to find out in a minute, baby. Oh man. So this match, by the way, is going to get a star and a half. Ooh. Meltzer would say a lot better than it looked on paper. How about that? Yeah. Well, there you go. When you said star and a half, that surprised me. I thought well, this would be one of those minus stars or duds. It's interesting to think about the placement of this match too, because historically these are two of your, well, four of your tippy top stars. Right. And this is not the main event. Right. And they are tippy top stars, not only of all time, but for our company at that time, look at the way <laughs> that pole is moving, man. Do you trust that that thing won't fall? Cause I don't No, And, and the only thing they've got it is like taped and Velcroed, right? Or do they have it stuck underneath? What do they got it? They got it taped. Well, it's also clamped and chained and okay. All right. I, yeah. I but, see the clamp, but still it's <laughs> who it's put fun. this seriously. This is when this had to be around the time Kevin Sullivan overdosed. Yeah, I think so. Or put it on a fucking pole. What the fuck do I care? Yeah. I got enough and, on the socks. Yeah. That's a, that's see that bat. That's a 36 ounce bat. It's a 36 inch bat, 54 ounces. That was what Kalia Skrimsky used in 67 when he won the MVP and led him to the world series. And they got fucked over by the St. Louis Cardinals. That's a yes bat right there. Do you know what's great? That makes total sense that Kevin Sullivan would be more concerned about what type of bat was on the pole Mm -hmm. as opposed to how they were actually putting the fucking thing on the pole. Well, if you know, Kevin Sullivan is, it's fucking life's baseball. No, no, I get it. Like every conversation I've ever had with him in some way got around to baseball. And let me tell you, buddy, it ain't cause I brought it up. (laughs) Uh, Look at Piper, man. (laughs) <laughs> I love how he sold that. Why did, um, those tights that Piper's wearing right there. Yeah. Why, why did, uh, all the guys go to K and H for their gear? I mean, it feels like everybody went to the same couple of guys for boots. Everybody went to the same folks for, for wrestling tights yeah. and K and H is like who, who flair used back in the day. And you can tell that that's what Piper's wearing there too. What, what, why do you think those guys just sort of hit on something and 
that just becomes what everybody does. I mean, cause K and H did stuff for Andre and warrior and Hogan and Brett and cactus, everybody. Well, uh, I will answer that by giving you a line that Jr. hit told us many, many years ago. Monkey see monkey do in wrestling was always like that. I got you. So if one guy gets it, everybody does. That's right. So one guy does a spot. Everybody wants to copy it. Bruce one guy sees that something works. He wants to copy. That's the way they do. Bruce That's gets the way a podcast it was and it blows up. Yeah. You get a podcast. Yeah. We're still here, baby. <laughs> That's right. We are, aren't we? You know, I got to tell you as we're recording this one and I know, you know, you look, you go all the way back to January of 2017. So we're two years into this now. Yeah, so. this is episode 124. Um, I think about all those shows that we've done together and this one here today. Yeah. It's one of them. It sure is. And we're enjoying the fuck out of it. How tan was Hulk Hogan? Look at that. Yeah, I know. It's weird because you always know he's tan, but then when you see like part of his untanned butt, then you're like, oh fuck. He's like real tan. Exactly. Oh, and they're going to spank Hulk. <laughs> Dude. What the fuck is this? What the fuck? The fans love to look at him. This, that the fans were showing some heat on that one. Oh God. We didn't nail down a word for that. Let's do it now. You don't like oh, the yeah. word heat, but you yeah. don't want to say partic fan participation. Audience reaction, like reaction, participation. Fuck uh, off. Those aren't words you'd use there. Why don't you just let him call it heat? God damn it. Okay. I'll call it heat. Thank you. I give up. Hey, by the way, next up, we've got a four star match and it's not your main event. It's Raven and DDP for the U S title. And they're pulling out all the stops for that, but it got four stars. Then your main event, Randy Savage. And sting for the world title, two and a half stars is what that one gets. But okay, this match we're watching now with Hulk Hogan gets 13 minutes. This should have been fucking eight minutes, but it's 13. So they put their biggest stars on here because they want to elevate the U S title and the world title, make them the last two matches. Oh, oh. And then, and then again, you know, the, uh, Thinking change, thinking with, with us change sometimes from show to show. I mean, well, in if, fairness, some of that's probably Hulk Hogan coming in saying, Hey brother, right. I need to get back for the room service. Right. Or Kevin Nash saying, I don't want to go on last. You know, you're right. You're absolutely right. And why do you think Kevin Nash wouldn't want to go on last? I'm not asking that to be funny. I'm. I, to, I, I were, can't predict that. I mean, Kevin probably, it was probably kind of whatever mood he was in that day. Well, I mean, here's the thing. The joke with Hogan for years was he wanted to get back to the hotel before they stopped serving room service. Okay. It's not like he's going out on the town this night. They are in Chicago though, but it's not like he's going out on the town. All right. So is it Kevin Nash wanting to go out? Do you think? It could have been. I mean, okay. Now that they're, they're in uh, Denver, so they're on Mountain Time. So oh, yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. They're at seven, so it's five o'clock Mountain Time. The show will be done by eight. Shit. Yeah, they can have some bar time. They can go out eight o'clock. Shit. They'll be done. They'll be out of the building by seven thirty. How about that? Absolutely. I, by the way, anybody who says Kevin Nash can't sell is lying. He's selling for the giant like crazy here. Sure he is. Mm, shitty blow by big show. Mm. I saw somebody I, the other day on Reddit make a great suggestion for big show. Somebody sent me this. Let me find it. You'll love this. The okay. suggestion was basically the big show should reappear doing like a no fucks given routine. What do you think about just in theory? Uh, isn't that kind of our gimmick? No fucks. Yeah, but we're talking about on TV. Okay. So, and it was a pretty funny idea, but the idea is like, he just shows up where you don't expect him. Right. And he just like takes over. So like he would just sit up a chair in the middle of the ring, start eating a sandwich 
and they're like in the middle of a match and guys are going to try to wrestle and he'd be like, I'm just, it's hungry on the sandwich. And what, what the, are they going to do? Right. Exactly. What the fuck are they going to do? Exactly. Like, he can't do anything with this. Like, no. <laughs> can't move him out of the way. What are you going to do? <laughs> I, I think it was a tremendous, let me, let me pull it up here. That's, that's o- a great idea. Officer Liger one is who posted it. A, fu- a fully formed, no fucks given big show, which we've seen versions of over the years would be amazing. Big show comes out to do guest commentary uninvited, puts his feet up on the table, hits his vape, contributes nothing and leaves halfway through. He shows up at two Oh five live with a gigantic chicken leg, sets up a chair in the ring during a match, sits down and starts eating. It looks confused as the cruisers are like, carry on. I'm just having dinner. Big show is asked to be a guest referee misses a pinfall entirely because he went to the audience to buy a beer from a vendor. I needed a break. I think that's tremendous. And he says, maybe I've just smoked too much weed on this Sunday, but I find this ridiculously entertaining. And I do too. I think a no fucks given big show would be hilarious. That to your point, great. what are you going to do with it? That's right. You're going to do fucking nothing. It's like, uh, when that whale died on the beach and those people didn't know what to do. So they blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> God, <laughs> fuck. We don't know what to do. Right. We had something there this big. How do we, what do we do? It, it kind of goes back to when Andre, we used to wrestle. If he didn't want to do anything, nobody could do it. If he didn't want to, if he didn't want to sell that night or if he didn't want to do what you wanted to do, there's nothing you could do. Nothing you could do. And that's a kind of a part of that. And these guys are working pretty hard, aren't they? It's fucking awful, man. Yeah, okay. It's not a great match, but they're putting some effort into it. No, they're doing their best, but it's so cartoonish. You know, it's weird just to see how wrestling changed from the 80s to the 90s because, you know, 10 years prior to this, I think the crowd would have been eating it up, but now look at them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we've seen Chris Benoit. We've seen Eddie Guerrero and we've seen Dean Malenko. We don't don't believe this anymore. Just cut a promo and make us hate you. They still, no one, and you know what's funny is with the exception of Roddy Piper at the beginning of this, no one's gone for the bat. Isn't that the, what's supposed to happen here? They can't. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. Hogan's 300 pounds. Kevin Nash is 300 pounds. Uh, big shows 400 as any of them, if they looked at it, the thing would bend. And I get that, but that's the, uh, but. But y'all didn't make the the shit properly. What are they supposed to do? Get up there, fall to their untimely death, live on pay per view? <laughs> no, <laughs> but they at least are supposed to try to within the 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 rules of the match try to go after it. Ooh. Hey, right, let me just tell you, I've got a business plan for me and you. You do? Just came up with it. Ah, right, damn. I'm getting you a kiosk at the biggest mall in Atlanta. Okay. And we're going to sell, oh my God, a drop kick. How about a big that? Show. Down he goes. Okay. What are we going to sell? We're going to sell earrings. <laughs> stop it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> stop. Stop. Dude, it would we're be gonna... huge. Just earrings and pinky rings. Just, and we'll call it da- uh, daddy's diamonds. Uh, instead, instead of like dad jokes or mom jeans, this is the, the jewelry equivalent dad, okay. jewelry, dad jewels.com. Oh, I get it. Now you get on top of the, the giant, the giant literally is working him like a goddamn hand puppet. <laughs> you got the bat. And if you get the bat, you can use it. Is that right? But now that he's got it, what's he going to do? <laughs> oh, they Some... fought to have it this whole time. Throw it down. The whole purpose of the match was to get the bat and use it on your opponent. And when Piper had it, he let Hogan steal it from him and Hogan being the dastardly heel. He is, he has the most violent weapon known to wrestling a bat. Oh no. Look, thankfully there's another one in the back. And, uh, and who brings it out? Brutus, but brother fruit barber beefcake. Now here's the worst part of this. He's trying to sneak a bat into Hogan. Why do you want that bat? You just threw the other one down. Can I make a suggestion? Cause that first one may have been real. And this one is rubber. That is why. Oh no. 
Oh, they're going to go for the hip. They're going right on the scar, Conrad. No. No. Oh, yeah. Thank God. I could have broke his hip. That rubber, that rubber bat would have broke his hip. Well, you never know. I mean, if you, if you, if you, you know, they say in baseball, if you use your wrist, you know, even a, even a rubber bat can hurt for these wrists. Boy, I think you're in the hip hop. Oh, <laughs> uh, so is this match over? Uh, or they, uh, they, it's still, it's still merciful, going on. A merciful God would have it end. <laughs> I don't know it's, if it actually it, is. This match is still going on. Oh God. Oh, there's this, there's the bat that was up on top. There's the bat was up on top. Oh, and he hit him with the real bat. That's it. Hogan's going to cover him. Turn around. One, two, oh, those motherfuckers. How about that? The guy was, look at those fuckers in the front with no shirt on. Wow. Hogan and Nash. Steal the fucking victory. Have you heard the, uh, the baseball bat story? Uh, I have not. Well, you know, there's gimmicks in wrestling, right? Right. Right. <laughs> well, there was once a, a hammer used in a match. Really? Uh, not, not a sledgehammer, but a hammer, a hammer. Right. And someone recently wrote about another, uh, a wrestler wrote a book about another wrestler. Oh my God. He turned on Kevin Nash. Holy shit. What has Hulk Hogan done? Hogan told Nash to power bomb the giant. And then when he bent over to do it, he hit him with the bat. Mother. You can't trust that mother. You never could trust that motherfucker. Look, how about that? There was some wood in that bat. <laughs> well, so there you go. So the one with the chain on it. Is, uh -huh. the, is the one that splintered. So that was gimmicked. Right. And then the other one had to be the rubber one. Right. Right. So anyway, here's this excerpt from this book. I'm Hang on. My, 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 my watch telling me to stand up my Apple watch. Okay. okay I'm we needed up. to know that. Okay. Some of the other guys were difficult to deal with whenever they were asked to lose blank blank was the worst. He'd get what we call the boo-boo face and walk to the ring sulking, make it obvious what was about to happen. Then whenever he'd get to the back after putting someone over, he'd collapse and make a big scene before making a miraculous recovery later on. My favorite blank scene was after a match where he'd been hit with a hammer. Blank was in the back, staggering around and asking people to call the doctor over. The doctor came over to blank, grabbed the hammer blank had been hit with, squeezed it, looked at blank and said, this is made of rubber. I got to tell you, that's one of my favorite stories in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you get hit with a rubber hammer, sell it, get a real doctor in the locker room. Not like a gimmick doctor, but like a real doctor, not on TV, just back amongst the boys. It's fucking hilarious, dude. Well, you know. It's, it's kind of an extension of the story that you told, not that, not the rubber hammer gimmick, but the guy, the blank guy who pouted going to the ring and pouted afterwards and made a big scene. That's the same guy. Okay. All right. It's kind of an extension of what was going through my gut before Starcast started. And that was, and, and it, it, I, I shouldn't say this is a blanket statement, but I, but I do need to say it. There was a point, especially when we found out that Ric Flair couldn't be there. And then, you know, you had to deal with egos. There's a part of wrestling that I really didn't like. And I felt that twinge again. Yep. Me too. Yeah. I just, I just, uh, and there, we can and not then there he is. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Fuckers. Yeah. He's probably like. Hey, cameraman, are you Tori Wilson? No, get out of my face. That's enough. 